Chelsea versus Southampton, our first game of 2019 against the side that underwent a complete change of identity when the new manager took over a few weeks ago. Chelsea do face a bit of an attacking injury crisis with multiple doubts and certain absentees in those forward roles. Nonetheless though, Chelsea are the favourites and will want to kick the new year off with a win. To find out everything you need to know about both sides ahead of the game, do make sure you watch all of this preview. Hello there guys and welcome back to 100% Chelsea. And first of all, I want to wish you all a very, very happy new year. I hope you had a great evening and a great night. And um, yeah, of course, like we say in Austria, I hope you slid into the new year nicely. Of course, this is the preview for the Chelsea versus Southampton game taking place tomorrow evening with the kickoff being at 7.45pm UK time, obviously at Stamford Bridge. And obviously, there's the preview. There will be a review. There will be fan camps, a, a vlog, all sorts of content surrounding the game. So if you don't want to miss out on any of that, do make sure you subscribe to 100% Chelsea if you haven't already. And also, let's see whether we can hit 400 or more likes in this video. It would be massively appreciated. You know that. So please do make sure you just smash the like button down below. Like I said, I would massively appreciate it. But now we're getting straight into the preview and starting it off by speaking about our opposition, Southampton. Now, the Saints currently sit in 17th, so just outside the relegation zone with 15 points from 20 games. But they are actually level on points with Burnley who are behind them just on goal difference. So far Southampton have just managed to win three games, they got six draws and 11 defeats with a goal difference of currently minus 17 scoring 21 goals but conceding a massive 38 which to be honest is quite a dreadful defensive record, the third most amount of goals conceded in the league thus far. Mark Hughes did start the season in charge after just about keeping them up last year, but after only one win up until then, he was sacked following a 2 all home draw with Manchester United on December 1st. I mean, even if they were 2 0 up, sacking your manager, when you're Southampton after a draw against Manchester United, to me, is still a bit weird. Anyway, they did sack him. They then had a caretaker manager in charge for the defeat against Tottenham, but following that, they did appoint the Austrian manager Ralf Hasenhüttl, formerly in charge of RB Leipzig and also Ingolstadt, both in Germany. Now, in my, in my eyes, he's a very very good manager getting exceptional results in the past and um, he also likes to play very quick a very quick brand of football you know with very intense pressing when his team does do what he wants them to do his first game in charge they did lose 1-0 in Cardiff but then they had two wins in a row against Arsenal you know most importantly and also Huddersfield only their second and third wins of the season before then losing to West Ham and Manchester City in the last two games but at least I guess they scored in both of those defeats because before Hasnittle took over they really didn't score many goals at all I mean they scored what was it now I think eight goals ever since he took over so you know that's in five games not all that bad considering where they are in the league before then they, they barely ever scored goals like in four of his five games you know in charge the Austrian went with a 3-4-3 formation but against Manchester City on Sunday they actually started with some sort of 4-3-3 or 4-3-2-1 if you will so um you know he didn't do so against Arsenal so it will be interesting to see whether he plans to change to kind of a 4-3-3 permanently now or whether that was just a one-off against Manchester City and he will go back to the 3-4-3 against us tomorrow we'll just have to wait and see the Saints also do have a few injury doubts in person of hero of Munich, Ryan Bertrand, the other fullback Cedric Suarez, as well as forward Michael Obafemi, however you pronounce his name, while midfielder Hoiberg, um, a very important player for them in midfield, is suspended after getting sent off in their last game against Man City. Nonetheless though, Southampton do still have some very dangerous players, in particular at the moment Danny Ings, who's on seven goals this season, which definitely isn't bad, but three of those, you know, seven have come in the last four games under the new manager. So, you know, definitely pr pretty potent striker these days. But also James Ward Prowse, for example, with his ridiculous crossing and deliveries, plus the likes of Nathan Redmond as well, and also um, Ryan Bertrand, if he is fit to play, is always a bit of a threat, even from left back. So they do still have dangerous players. But, you know, the main thing is just that they're a completely different team under Haasnoodle than they were before. You know, when we last played them, we beat them 3 0, obviously. Um, at St Mary's and especially the win against Arsenal was remarkable but still that defeat to West Ham and then the fact that while City didn't find it easy even in a bit of a nervy period for City they ended up beating you know Southampton pretty comfortably it wasn't like I said not straightforward but it was pretty comfortable in the end and that certainly does suggest to me that we should very much so be able to beat them tomorrow. I still, though, see every game against the house Noodle team as a very difficult game. I have to be honest, though, I'm quite happy that we have to play them now on the rim rather than, say, in April or something, because I think they'll be a much, much better team than they are right now. With that being it about Southampton, usually we would speak about the press conference, but as it is New Year's Day, it seems there is no press conference on New Year's Day because there was no press conference today. There was a tiny fraction kind of of the post-match press conference after Palace that was about today, but nothing really came out that we that wasn't already discussed, you know, before, or, you know, that wasn't already discussed in the, just the post-match press conference after Palace. So there is no major news other than team news and obviously injury, but obviously that, you know, I'm going to talk you through with the lineup for Chelsea now. So, you know, just no news from a press conference by Sarri. But getting into Chelsea, and like I just said, 
you know, team news, injury news, we do at the moment face some sort of injury crisis, you could say. I mean, not overall as a squad, maybe, but because all of the injured players are attacking players, it is kind of an injury crisis because, you know, we kind of struggled for options in that area of the pitch. Obviously, Olivier Giroud is out, leaving the ground on crutches on Sunday after obviously injuring his ankle against Palace. Pedro is almost, you know, also certainly still out with this hamstring problem. Saudi obviously said, you know, a couple of days ago that he would be out for, say, at least 10 days. So, you know, he won't be fit tomorrow. Cesc Fabregas is also a doubt after, you know, missing the Palace game with a neck injury. And the same goes for Ruben of this cheek with the back problem and obviously Kalamats Nodoy with that hamstring issue sustained in the Watford game. Who, by the way, about Kalamats Nodoy, Sky Sports, you know, according to Sky Sports, we have rejected a 20 plus million pounds offer for made by Bayern Munich, which is obviously good news. You know, we're not selling him. Hopefully we're not selling him. Let's not sell him. Otherwise, I'll go bloody ballistic. We're not selling Kalamats Nodoy. Cal? Callum? You're not going anywhere. You're staying. You're signing that new deal. Whether you like it or not, it has to happen. You know, otherwise I'll be very upset. <laughs> but yeah, on the left are three that I just mentioned. Um, obviously, Fabregas, Hudson, Odoi, and Loftus Cheek. I don't currently have reliable information about that in the situation. It is said that Saudi does hope and is hoping for a return by Loftus Cheek and Hudson Odoi. But whether that will happen, whether they will be able to play tomorrow, we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. Also, Danny Drinkwater did also pick up an injury just before the Palace game. But let's be honest, he wouldn't be in the team either way. So that doesn't really make much of a difference. So with all of that in mind, and no defensive rotation in our last three games, if I'm not mistaken, we will rotate in those positions tomorrow. Well, who knows? Because I don't know. I mean, Kepa will stay in goal. That I do know. And there is, I guess, a small chance of Andreas Christensen possibly replacing either Antonio Vidigar or more likely David Luiz, simply because, you know, David Luiz is the older of the two. And also there is, I guess, a small chance that Emerson might replace Alonso at left back. But the biggest likelihood, in my opinion, is certainly that we'll just see, again, no changes to the back four, as disappointed as a lot of you, including myself, might find that for the left back position. Now, in midfield, well, N'Golo Conte will start again. I've said it before, the man just doesn't get tired and also we don't really have any other option that is like him, so he'll have to start, basically. And um, next to him, I'm pretty sure Jorginho is kind of forced to start with the injury, obviously, to Fabregas, even though the Spaniard, I guess, might make the bench in case he does recover, but even then, I very much doubt that he'll start. And then that third midfielder spot, in my opinion, will be taken by Mateo Kovacic, who was obviously rested against Palace and only came on for the last couple of minutes. But then coming to the front three is where it gets tricky. Like I said, you know, basically all of the injuries except Fabregas, and I suppose Drinkwater, um, you know, are within the second players. Obviously, Loftus-Cheek is also a midfielder, but has played as part of that front three before and possibly would be an option for that tomorrow. Um, so that is obviously what makes it tricky. With that in mind, Hazard and William, let's be honest, even if they're a bit tired, they just kind of have to start. But the question is, where would they start? Obviously, Giroud is out, like I just said. So if Hazard doesn't play down the middle, you know, but doesn't play as the false nine, it's going to have to be Alvin Rata to start up front. I very much doubt, you know, Pedro won't make a return, so he won't just start as the striker. And I don't think, you know, Saudi will out of nowhere make Loftus cheek, the false nine or the striker, whatever you want to call it. So if it's not Hazard there, it's it's going to be Murata. There's, there's no other option. But it, in my opinion, does depend a lot on the fitness situation of Loftus Cheek and Kalamats Nodoy. Now, if only Hudson Nodoy is fit, I think Murata might still start and Kalamats Nodoy might make the bench and then we might change it throughout the game and put Azar up front as the game goes on. But if Ruben is fully fit, I think it is actually more likely for Azar to start as the false nine with Loftus Cheek on the right wing with William on the left. You know, obviously, like I said, it depends on their fitness situation. If neither of them are able to start, let alone make the bench, you know, then obviously Murata has to start up front. We don't have another option. But for my predicted lineup that you'll see on screen in a sec, I'll go with the players that we know to be fit, unless we have more injuries that, that we just don't know about at this stage. So obviously in a 4-3-3 formation, Kepa Arizabala getting gold in a back four of, like I said, presumably an unchanged back four. Azpilicueta, Marcos Alonso has to do fullbacks. Antonio Rüdiger and David Luiz has to do centre-backs. Then a midfield three of Jorginho, N'Golo Conte and Matteo Kovacic. Then a front three, again, like I said, just with the players that I know, well, that we kind of, Thing to, to know that, that they're fit, basically. Hazard on the left, William on the right, and Alvin Morata starting up front. Although, hopefully, at least one of Loftus-Cheek and Hudson Odoi, uh, you know, is fit and starts instead of Morata. Hopefully, do I see that happening? I just don't know about the injuries. Um, but, you know, that's not even because I dislike Morata that much. It's, for me, simply because I want Hazard to play down the middle because I think that's where he poses the biggest threat to our opponent and, you know, is most influential for us, at least in my opinion. But generally, the game will just be very interesting, especially how much and how hard Southampton will press. Now, they did press pretty hard against Man City and also, you know, did put them under quite a bit of danger with their pressing. So you can only expect them to do so again against us tomorrow, which will make quick passing and top-notch movement off the ball so crucial, you know, obviously by Chelsea tomorrow. Um, and if we do that, we should, we really should be able to exploit the spaces that they'll obviously leave in behind their press, um, you know, and obviously make make use of that and create chances and ideally score. So it should, not will, but at least should, be a completely different game to the last three or four games that we obviously played when the 
on you know our opponent just set within their you know 35 yards of their own goal and just had all of their 11 players in there and just made it as difficult as possible for us to break them down and create chances because you know once getting past the press we should find it easy to get into their box and create big big chances not just chances like a free kick when we hit the post like actual big chances maybe like a tap in that would be nice just a tap in within the six yard box create a chance like that when even Murata could miss that hopefully um but yeah you know that, that's kind of what we have to create and hopefully we can do that you know obviously when we do create those chances hopefully we'll be able to convert them as well now if we don't manage to beat their pressing though we could be in some serious trouble but at the same time we did manage against man city for the most part and we beat them 2-0 so you know surely we should be able to manage against southampton too we do have to be careful though to not make any silly mistakes because then they can punish us if they do win the ball back very high up the pitch like they did against manchester city a few times now my score prediction if hazard starts up front as the force nine is going to be a 3-1 victory to chelsea if Alvin Morata is the one starting up front, I'm going to go for a 2-1 victory. I do think that we'll get the three points. Hopefully I'm right on that, but I do think that we just pose more of a goal-scoring threat with Hazard down the middle. But I still, like I said plenty of times in this video already, I do expect a very tricky game that will hopefully be a bit better on the eye than the last few, especially in the final third. But yeah, to be honest, that's really it for me. Leave me all of your thoughts ahead of the game down in the comments section below. Your predicted lineups, your score predictions as well. Leave me all of it down in the comments section below. Like I said in the beginning, let's see whether we can hit 400 or more likes in this video. That would be massively appreciated. So don't forget to smash the like button down below. Don't forget to check out my social media, which is Lars Lifton seven on both Instagram and Twitter. As you can see over here, and also the links to both of them will be down in the description. So if you could follow me over there, that would be massively appreciated. I'm pretty close to 3,000 followers on Twitter. So, you know, if we could reach that in the next few days or so, that would obviously be great. Um, and of course, this is YouTube. So if you haven't already, do make sure you subscribe to 100% Chelsea. And also don't forget to hit the notification bell button and choose to be notified with all uploads so you don't miss any of the future videos. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Happy New Year again. Up the chills, and I'll see you next time.